Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and today we're going to be talking about a topic that's been requested over and over and over again. These are the fundamentals of landscape design, part one. So when somebody asks me, what exactly are the core fundamentals of landscape design? I mean, landscape's very different than something like portraits or character design or prop design. Landscapes are very different. A lot of people are very afraid of landscapes because they're like, I don't know, how do I even start? The funny thing is that the core of art in the elements and principles of design, you can find those here in that playlist, are actually the same core fundamentals of landscape design. But we're not just going to go over every single one again. That would be a waste of your time. We're going to instead dive into a few of them a little bit more refined and a little bit more detailed in specific to landscapes. But remember if you listen to none of my other advice throughout this video that composition is key. Now I know that might seem a little bit vague, uh, like okay composition, that's a pretty broad range and topic, but really it's very very simple. This actually stems from an idea that I get when I talk to a lot of character designers. People think about landscapes as a backdrop for a character, rather than being a character themselves. If you're designing a character or making a portrait, you would detail everything. You wouldn't just do the hair and maybe the eyes and then just go, ah, the face is fine, I don't really need to put any other detail on that figure. No, of course not. And you wouldn't treat a landscape any different. Whether you're putting a character into a landscape or just making a landscape, that landscape is a character in and of itself. So of course you would treat that entire landscape, foreground, middle ground, and background, and everywhere in between, with every little bit of detail and, and respect that you would perhaps a figure. Okay, so let's start diving in here. What do we start with? Well, okay, composition, sure. How do I make a good composition? Well, a good way to start is the rule of thirds. Now, I'm not going to get into the rule of thirds for like the third or fourth time that I've done this in a video. You can find uh, at least one or two of them in that Principles and Elements and Principles of Design playlist you can find there, also in the description box below. But knowing the rule of thirds, and as well knowing how to break it, is a great way to start with landscapes. Artist Dan Nelson here on YouTube actually has a really great video on this. He made it back in 2011, but he talked about this idea of landscapes, rule of thirds, and what he calls line placement as being a really huge key factor. Again, you can find more about that in the card up there as well as in the description box below. You can find a link to that. For this reason, I'm not going to go really far into the rule of thirds because he does a much better job at it. So when I was trying to write this video, I was thinking, how do I paint a landscape? I, I, it's so subconscious for me, I didn't think about it. So I started thinking, okay, shapes. I play with shapes a lot. You balance your shapes, not necessarily in perfect symmetry, because to be fair, in most cases, perfect symmetry in landscape is boring, but balancing the number of shapes and the size of them. Again, basic elements and principles of, of design here. Another fun thing to work with is odd numbers, odd numbers of objects, specifically larger ones. So in this particular piece, which I did a couple years ago, there's sort of five distinct points of sort of dis of, I would say interest. One, two, three, four in the back, and five. That balance out, but are interesting because there's an odd number of them. Now in addition to balancing out shapes, there's always perspective. And for a really kind of gridded out cityscape, it's, it's understood, yeah, obviously, perspective. But people tend to forget that perspective does exist in landscapes too. Giving yourself a basic outline of one, two, or three point perspective, even if you paint over it, will really kind of help you in the long run. In like and understanding that rule of thirds, know the rule, know how to break it, perspective in landscapes is allowed to be more fluid. Don't use a ruler, just kind of eyeball it and go, yeah, that looks about right. Because when you just kind of do it naturally by eye, your landscape will look more natural versus more rigid and refined. When I say rigid and refined, I mean it doesn't look like a building. It doesn't look like a structure. It looks like a tree. Additionally, don't forget about placement of your horizon line. 
remember that a very high horizon line on your picture plane is going to give you a lot more room to work with in the land. But a very low horizon line will give you a ton of sky to play with. Another big factor to think about is positive and negative space. When you're designing a landscape, think about the entire sky and open area as your negative space because that's what it is. And any trees, structures, the baseland, all of that's positive space. Now it is possible to create a domination in one direction or the other and still make a good landscape. It just won't be perfectly balanced. This idea of creating something that maybe doesn't have great balance but still looks complex and interesting, we're going to be talking about in part two a little bit more when we talk about layers. If you're looking for a good way to understand this positive and negative space relationship though, I do recommend checking out my tutorial on my second channel, Sketch Every Day, where I do mini thumbnails, which really are just the positive and negative space of a landscape, and designing just based on two values. As a character design example, your positive space, so your base land and your rocks and your trees, will be sort of the main character, and all the negative space in the sky are your supporting characters. Okay, so every landscaper you talk to is going to tell you a little bit about atmospheric perspective. As an object like a tree, a mountain, whatever you happen to be painting, gets further and further from the viewer and closer to the horizon's line subsequently, you're going to get uh, color distortion, a uh, change in size and shape, mist, fog, haze, smoke, just anything that exists way out in the horizon that distorts and changes that object. You're also going to probably see a bit less detail the further back you go. A simple way to think about this is to create your landscape with three basic layers. Foreground, middle ground, background. So you might think, okay, three layers is good, so more layers would be more complex, more interesting. Yes, it would, but do not get carried away. You can very easily overdo it, and more and more and more and more and more and more layers changes a d interesting dynamic piece into a busy distracting piece. I always love pointing to Albert Beardstadt's uh, Among the Sierra Nevada Mountains as a great example piece for landscapes. In particular, this idea of layering and atmospheric perspective. He uses a lot of layers in this piece, but none of them are so distracting from the eye. Everything is on its own layer. So each layer, each step back, gives a different level of atmospheric. Things to get cloudy and misty, and they distort and change in color. And all of that together is why all of those layers work. Okay, now on to one of my favorite concepts in landscapes, lighting. Now I know I said that composition is key, but also they kind of go hand in hand with lighting. Lighting is also key, so remember that. For a landscape, when you think about something like natural lighting, okay, natural lighting in the landscape basically usually just means the sun or maybe like fire. And depending on what kind of landscape you're making, something more fantasy oriented like I do, or even something just regular realism, you might have electric lights shining in different places in your landscape. You might have magical energy swirls that are giving off light. Uh, and you might just have fire in places that fire isn't normally there, or even different colors of fire. So all of these create light sources, and you need to kind of understand what that color is and what color the shadows reflecting should be. Natural light is usually warm light that reflects cool shadows. Meanwhile, artificial light can be warm or cool, and usually a cool light will reflect warmer shadows. For more on this idea of color and shadows and light, check out my video over here on Is Blue Good for Shadows? Okay, change of setting for a change of pace. Let's talk about texture variants and variables. Now for acrylics in particular, you can always grab a unique textured medium and create interesting textures with the paint or just using a lot more paint to create texture. But for this, we're just gonna be talking about the perceived texture, not the actual texture. Dense forests, vast oceans, or open deserts can be really kind of tricky scapes to master because they can very easily be overwhelmed or even underwhelmed with texture. A forest can very easily just feel like a mass of like rough, stiffly textures. A lot of people want to detail everything in a forest when you really just don't need to. Meanwhile, sand and water is very open and can seem just washed out. It's one big long stream of the same big long brush stroke. There's no rocks or anything in it to really break it up. 
And for that reason, these landscapes are harder because honestly, they can get boring really easily. So when you're designing a landscape, don't just think about the big, broad, sweeping areas that you paint with just a big, giant brush. Think about that environment. Think about what would exist in that environment. What grows there? What sits in the grass? And using those examples from real life, you can go, okay, this could work because this is how it look, looks in reality, so this is how it'll look in my landscape. Another really important part of sort of building your landscape is, this one's I guess a little bit more optional, is that you can use natural framing. Uh, now what do I mean by natural framing? Well not framing in terms of framing your artwork, but framing the viewer's attention. So using shapes or colors, uh, whether that be a black silhouette in the foreground, or sort of just large shapes around the piece to lead the eye exactly where you want the viewer to look. The piece behind me is Watchful Under Weeping Flora, a piece I did a couple of years ago. And this particular piece, I used the tree very specifically on the top of the piece to keep the viewer's attention out of the sky and pointed down towards the rest of the landscape. Now we've covered a lot of stuff here today, so let's take a quick review. Build your landscape with big, interesting shapes, as well as smaller ones that you kind of work down and balance together. Remember that odd numbers of these shapes, both in big and small, are more interesting to look at than even numbers. One, two, and three point perspective are just as valid in landscapes as they are with really any other type of scape, scape cityscapes, or whatever. You don't have to be specific with it though, go ahead and eyeball it. Don't use a ruler, just kind of get it close. If your landscapes are looking too empty or maybe too busy, think about the positive and negative space you're using. Even if you're not doing a realistic landscape and doing something more fantasy based, a lot like what I do on a regular basis, it's important to still work with atmospheric perspective and a few layers. And finally, if you're looking for a cool way to spin your landscapes a little bit further, go ahead and add some natural framing. So this was just part one of this idea of understanding and designing your own landscapes. Uh, part two is going to be a little bit more complex than this. We're going to be diving into some interesting topics on symbolism, building a story, uh, adding more detail, and creating unique special effects with both traditional and contemporary landscape styles. So as always, like the video if you learned something, get subscribed if you're not already, look forward to more, and this has been from Cinderblock Studios, see you guys next time. Yep, okay, gotta get this edited and put up in the next four hours.